bit of a progress update. Um, I've got the airline all attached now. I've replaced a bunch of the lines actually. Um, I've got the machine on its feet and it's leveled and I'm leveling pretty seriously on this thing. So that's 0 0.05 of a millimeter over a meter. So this is real, real accurate. Um, interestingly, this is bowed. So this whole thing is bowed. Admittedly, it's like a thou, I think, or something like that. I probably need to work it out exactly, but I'm sure when I last sort of guesstimate, it was about a thou in the middle. So it's not a lot, obviously, over the plane. It's just a shows up a lot on this because that's obviously very accurate. Um, there's a lot of little caveats with this thing um, about balancing all of this out so you get nice concentricity. And I've had a look online and a lot of people are struggling with concentricity. Obviously, it's just machine set up. I've now got some of the tooling. All the tooling's been cleaned. So all the pilots and everything. And I'm just playing around with stuff. This is good. This is this is awesome. Let me just change the uh, zoom here. So so that's going to get real accurate results, you know. Um, I don't know if I might try and tap it in a little bit, see if it comes up. I know it's only supposed to get you ballpark, but shit. Like it's just not right at all. Um, I noticed that this switch is not the correct switch. It's this one, but obviously that's been screwed. Um, I'm not that bothered that it doesn't line up with each individual thing. I know to the right is, you know, I mean, I might even write on here. To the right is that, to the left is locked and vice versa. Um, so yeah, I've got my airline now. I, I keep turning this off because as soon as you turn it on, well, I'll show you. Uh, but that's the vacuum generator. I've actually quietened it down a, a crap ton because I don't want it making a loud noise, but I'm just making sure at the minute as I'm leveling this out or the amount of, oh, there we go. Um, so at the minute I'm setting the amount of height that it comes up, but as soon as you turn the air on, let me uh, just turn it on. Oh, no, wrong way. It starts pulling a vacuum. And down we go. So yeah, as soon as you turn that on, it starts pulling a vacuum on the whole machine. So uh, it's loud and obnoxious, which is why I'm wearing in defenders most of the time. Um, so. This is all on the pedal, so this head floats on that pedal. So these plungers come down, lock this centre piece in, and then this whole thing floats on what's that? One, two, three. So it's got six airlines: two at the front, one at the rear. Obviously, taking more weight at the front. It's an airline that goes there. I have no idea what that is for. Literally, no idea. Um, that might run in. Oh, maybe one of them does as well, actually. Yeah, one of them probably runs into here because this floats real nice. But this whole head doesn't float very well. It was lifting up, so bear with me, 0 0.05 of a millimetre on the back and 0 0.012 of a millimetre on the front. So now it's perfectly level. I've There's a couple of adjusters around this side. So you can see, let me change the zoom. Um, yeah, what's that? Does it say front head? Event, all right, okay, rear event. Yeah, so either way, uh, you've got front, which is the top one. God, this thing does not like the focus. Um, yeah, so the rear one, which is this one here, is the bottom one, I think. And yeah, the top one is the front one. So I've just been playing around with them. You need a lot more front, obviously, because it's heavier than the rear to get the same lift. But um, I think I've now got it at basically 0. Point 0 0.03 of a millimetre across the top, but where this is slightly bowed, and there might be, I mean, I have cleaned this thing, but there's, um, <clears throat> let's take that off there. There is definitely, oh, stick you down there. Um, I'll see if I can show you. So there's gonna be a bit of noise, obviously, but. <laughs> and you'll see how, so those plungers go down. They centre this piece, and then that is already floating and sliding. So I've just lent on it. 
you can see hopefully that that is drifting so you go okay it's sliding back that's because it's bowed but then if I see if oh actually it's actually gone all the way this time I think let's have a look no so it's still getting stuck so it's still getting stuck on that front corner and you can feel it hangs up on that front corner go around the other side got move the foot pedal actually that feels like it's getting hung up in the middle yeah so it's getting hung up in the middle there that's interesting slide it down the other oh there she goes she's gonna go all the way this time <coughs> <Right>. <coughs> she's going back but I say there is a bow so but yeah she floats all the way out this side now so it's interesting that I've still got a little bit of bind yeah just there and it's not down this end fully yeah just gets like a little a little stuck but I can't tell what it is. Oh, didn't get fast. So I'm just going to check the bed and make sure. But um, let's turn that air off. Alright, so we've got everything going on. Let me just zoom in. But this is me. Oh, it's jumped up to five. That's interesting. Not quite on zero now. Let's see if we can adjust that. I mean, I'm not even turning yet. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna sort out this floating, hopefully, with these adjusters. And then, so it tells you in the instructions. It's really quality. Uh, how to adjust the front stage and everything like that. It just doesn't tell you how much it should lift by. It just should lift freely. Things that I'm not really clued up on or understand very well at the minute is the balance of this. Because obviously you want this to be perfectly balanced, i.e. directly upright. Um, so no load on anything whatsoever. The problem is, as soon as you wind it up, it just tilts in any direction it wants to. So obviously it's because it's the counterweight so far up, like the weight is so far up, it just gets stuck over um, and doesn't centralize. So it's got to be down, but then you're balancing here instead of, well, what about there? And what about here? So, I mean, I've not really thought about it too much, but it balances fine just there. But then as soon as you stick a clock on it, you know, I mean, this is the one that it came with. As soon as I stick that clock on there, that's then counterbalance. Now, does that matter? Obviously, if I don't put the clock on there now, does it matter? Because, so what I'm saying is, sorry, that with the air all on, and it floating around, don't have the clock on it, then get it set up in the pilot perfectly. Um, and I was reading somewhere that um, two tenths of a thou is the clearance between the pilot and the guide. So we'll measure that and we'll see. Um, but I was also reading that a lot of these pilots aren't even concentric. So I'm gonna have to put them in the lathe and make sure this, this piece is concentric and then make sure it's still concentric out here. I had a guy, well not I had a guy, a guy on an American forum, I can't remember what it's called, something Speed um, that I'm part of. Um, he was like, so he bought like 10 pilots from Surdy or something and 50% of them were three thou out with the tip from the base. So, you know, three thou there, zero down here. So that's about as useful as a chocolate teapot. So he sent them back, he said, but obviously I don't know, that's the, you know, that was from like 2016 or something. So I don't know if that's the thing in this country 
or, or what. And because these are live pilots, you know, you're talking about close tolerance fit. Like, so, hmm, interesting. So we will see, we will see. Um, anything else? Yeah, so the guy that used it before has rounded, as you can see, instead of being flat on this grinding wheel, he's rounded the edge off because he keeps dragging the bit, the form bit off, instead of back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, away. And that's what all this is for. You can zoom out a bit. So you put your tooling in there, instead of being, you know, back, forward, back, forward, sliding it up and down on here, and then bringing it away, he's been sliding it backwards and forwards and then just sliding it off and he's rounded the edge off. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's shit, man. Like it's just a rounded edge. So new one of them, they're like 120 quid each, so that's cool. Um, he had no tooling, i.e., sorry, no measurement tooling, so he wasn't measuring con concentricity with a gauge, wasn't measuring a seat or valve. Uh, and the only other thing while I'm here is this doesn't seem to work very well. Now, I don't know whether someone replaced the foam. He said he's never even used it or never used to use it, which is concerning because obviously that's the thing, hey, chick vacuum, you know, for your concentricity and all that stuff. So fun, fun. Um, all the pads there, I mean, none of them really look damaged or used, but it pulls a vacuum, no problem. So I thought it was, obviously I said in the last video, or whether it's the same video, I don't know yet, but... Thought it was the vacuum generator, and then so I got a cheap Amazon one, um, so that'll be a spare now. But this all seems to work fine. Like you put your thumb over it, it pulls decent vacuum. You're talking like eight, five, close to nine. Um, but it won't, you put that up there, boom, it will not pull vacuum. Like, well, sorry, it'll pull back some vacuum, but it won't pull enough to hold even hold it there. It's just like it's open cell foam instead of closed cell foam. So I don't know whether he replaced it all. And then like I don't know, but either way, um, yeah, we've, that's got to be solved as well. Just thought I'd show you. This is actually how quiet it is once it's on, with all my phone setup going on. So it's actually not noisy in here at all. Maybe it's picking it up really loud. There's no point me zeroing it, but I've changed the clock on here now. Um, this is a zero point zero. Zero one millimeter, so this is ridiculous, but give you an idea. So there's no point me zeroing it because I make too much of a difference. And I think we can say that safely. What's that? Two and a half, two point five, or zero point zero two five um, going into that. So. there is purely um, that because I need to put it closer but I can't be bothered now it's somewhat of a zero it'll be too great so let's have a look hard to do so other side right here we are oh gosh that's that a bit fast let me zero that i'll put it as close as i can to in the same place and i had it basically in line with the front of this but let's have a look so it seems to be between 0.025 0.03 so then we just need to see if it's actually going to float let's get that cock out of the way try not to is it going to tip over probably try not to destroy everything um, obviously that's a bit over the top that one but let's see what happens so it's, it, it's, it actually wants to stay here so if I push it up to this way and I did just make an adjustment 
if I let that go. So I just made an adjustment down here, it's still moving, um, to try and balance it, but, and there seems to be a flat, uh, let me just go, oh, let me let it run first. So we'll see if it will sink across the other side. I'm just gonna tap it forward a bit. Because surely this is more about not how the machine sits, but how the machine levels, because that's where the accuracy is coming from. But that clearly wants to fall very much that way. Which is weird because the machine is definitely higher that side. Let me just shove this all the way down the other end. Just going to put that, oh yeah, getting stuck. So I'm just checking the lift and they're saying it should be between 0.2 and 0.3, so 0.02 and 0.03. So we've got that on there. Sure enough, we're basically at 0.03. So that's one location. I've now got to do the back and same the other side. And then that part's done, so then it's the sphere. Um, and then I've still got to balance it, and honestly, I don't know if balancing it, because it's, you know, here and out, you can adjust this, these, you know, these bolts, and then push this weight around a little bit, but for all the effort, is it not going to be just easier to, I don't know, put like a tiny little magnet on there, maybe glue it, I don't, I don't know, but the, the difference in the movement when it's high and low, I'll show you in a bit once I've done this, but it's crazy. So, and then the dial indicator on, like I say, that'll all have to be fixed. So you'll fix all these and then click up the dial indicator because currently that's not, that's not attached at all. Um, and the dial indicator goes on there and touches on this base. Um, but then of course that adds a big counterweight to the whole thing. Now, assuming it's all fully locked, Will that make a difference to the run out on the guide? Who knows? We've still got to check all these guides, at uh, the pilots, sorry, um, to see what's going on there. I don't know whether to put them in the lathe, which still is not up and running, or I could put them in the Surdy machine, this Surdy machine, and see what the run out is. So obviously turn this on, the clamp's open, because it's centerless, uh, although I haven't got any pads in there yet. So there's little, little um, frictionless pads that go on this side and then the ball bearing uh, this side. So I can put them in there and then check run out on the bottom. So this is why I don't know if I need a run out gauge for the valve because it's got like four uh, stainless balls in it and then you, you roll it and then you read the run out on the valve face but surely this is that. Apart from this could be slightly out but then so could the other thing but then centralize it, um, yeah. We'll figure that out in a bit, but potentially I can check all them, them on that and then, yeah. Let's just finish this bit and then, gosh, this machine. And I haven't even cut a valve yet to see how, oh, I haven't got the tool. The concentricity tool is about 2,000 uh, pounds for a seat and for a valve is about 250 quid or 300 quid. No, it's 350 pounds for the valve one. Um, half that price in america of course um so yeah those shipping and import taxes are really doing some good so i've just moved around to the rear i'm going to do each one but that is actually quite a lot so that's 0 0.5 0 0.05 on the back 0 0.03 on the front so we'll see what the other side is and then we need to get into these and then start adjusting them whoop, whoop. I doubt any, well, I know this machine hasn't been really serviced for probably at least five years. Um, so me adjusting it, even though it says there an expert is needed to do it, it's not going to be the end of the world, I doubt. And I really can't make it much worse than it already is, so. What can I? Yeah, so I've now leveled this out using the valves, so I closed them all off. I was fucking about with it a different way, but I've closed them all off and then opened them. <clears throat> they need more opening 
on this front edge to get them to come up to the right level. So I think the front edge is between 0 0.02 and 0 0.025, and then the rear is 0 0.03 to 0 0.035 or something like that. <clears throat> Best I can do, I'll put magnets all the way around because this is alley and this is still just to stop this moving around because it wants to roll forward, which is interesting because this is basically flat, if not tilted slightly upright. So <clears throat> I think the best way to do this is not do it off of this surface and make sure it's leveled. I think it's to do it on what it wants. So I think if we adjust this, so the head wants to sit in the middle, and if we adjust uh, the tilt back and forward, so this head wants to stay in the middle, because this one's a lot easier to move. So it, it's easier to see if it's flat or not. <clears throat> because really what matters is that this shaft is neutral and has no load on it. Um, so I think that's probably the best way to do it. I've done it as I see flat. And again, this is, oh no, I've got no gas. Ha. Huh. This still wants to, <clears throat> So if you give it a little kickstart, it still wants to float to the right, at uh, left, sorry. And then let me just bring this back to the middle. It's gonna be around there. This, see this in here, let me zoom in. So you can see here, <clears throat> and if I press that one to release that, it wants to fall forwards. So admittedly it pulled towards to the right. I don't know if it's going to do that every time. So that will recenter it. So I wonder if I pull it over this way a little bit. <clears throat> Hit it again. Now, so it still falls to the right and forward. I had a little bit of a brainwave and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So if this is like uh, 0 0.03 and this is 0 0.02, then obviously it's got slightly more out the front, but push forwards. So I've just adjusted it about, so it's got less. Um, so I can get it down to about 0 0.2 and I can up this to 0 0.3 and it still slides forward, so that's bullshit. Um, obviously doesn't matter. This is in fact, let's have a look. So it's actually up in the air, so it's tilted backwards. So it's saying it's still up in the air. So the whole thing's up in the air, yeah, it floats forward. So I've worked that one out.